Hello and welcome as we celebrate Reformation Sunday. Uh, this is, of course, a special festival when we remember the uh, reformers who took the Catholic Church and tried to repair it to bring back the truth of the Bible. And so we, of course, remember uh, Martin Luther and Philip Melanchthon and Gerhardt and all these other wonderful men who really risked their lives in order to bring us back to the pure, undiluted truth of the gospel. We're going to begin our service today with our uh, opening hymn, uh, which today is number 562, All Mankind Fell in Adam's Fall, number 562. <laughs> sin infects us all from one to all the curse descends and over all God's wrath impends through all our powers corruption creeps and us in dreadful bondage we draw our infant breath and reap its fruits of woe and death. From hearts depraved to evil prone flow thoughts and deeds of sin alone. God's image lost the darkened soul seeks not nor finds its heavenly goal but Christ the second Adam came to bear our sin and woe and shame to be our life our light our our only hope, our only stay. As by one man all mankind fell, and born in sin was doomed to hell, so by one man who took our place, we all justified by grace. We thank you, Christ, new life is ours, new light, new hope, new strength, new powers. This grace our every way attend until we reach our journey We are following the order of divine service setting three. If you have a hymnal with you, it's on page 184, but of course we always put everything on screen for you here online if you wish to follow it that way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, 
I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Dear brothers and sisters, no matter what's going on in your lives this Reformation Day, know that you are washed clean in the blood of the Lamb every time you come to the Lord in faith and repentance. And with that being said, let's hear that beautiful absolution of Christ. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our introit for today is drawn upon uh, Psalm 34 and Psalm 119. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. 
let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for Reformation Day is from the book of Revelation, the 14th chapter. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam. Though the mountains tremble at its swelling, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle for today is from the book of Romans, the third chapter. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. 
By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our verse of the day for today is from Luke chapter 12. Alleluia! Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, You will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever, the son remains forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Thee, O Christ. We confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is probably the most famous hymn of the Reformation, uh, number 657, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, number 657. Fortress is our God, a sword and shield victorious. He breaks the cruel oppressor's rod and wins salvation glorious. The old satanic foe has sworn to as one with craft and dreadful might he arms himself to fight on earth he has no equal no strength of ours can match his might we would be lost, rejected. But 
But now a champion comes to fight whom God himself elected. You ask who this may be? The Lord of hosts is he, Christ Jesus mighty Lord, God's only Son adored. He holds the field victorious. Though hordes of devils fill the land, all threatening to devour us, we tremble not unmoved we stand, they cannot overpower us. Let this world's tyrant rage, in battle we'll engage, his might is doomed to fail, God's judgment must prevail. One little word subdues him. God's word forever shall abide, no thanks to foes who fear it. For God himself fights by our side, with weapons of the Spirit. Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse, though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom ours forever. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, why are you here today? What's the compelling factor for you to worship God? And in fact, while we're at it, what does it mean to worship God? These are questions that eventually get to the very heart of the Reformation, one of the most important events of the second millennium. Martin Luther, in his desire to reform the church and to remove the errors that had slowly crept into her teaching, posted his 95 Theses on the Wittenberg church door. In these Theses, Luther got to the heart of the Christian faith, Justification by grace through faith in Christ. We are not saved through the sale of indulgences, but by the blood of Christ. It is by God's grace that we are saved, not by our own works. And the church had fallen away from this central and most crucial teaching, poisoning it with the heresy of works righteousness, which holds that man has an active role in his salvation. In our text from Revelation 14, the blessed apostle and evangelist St. John records what he saw in his vision of heaven as the Lord revealed it to him. He saw the Lamb of God, Jesus, standing atop Mount Zion. The saints were there with him, learning and singing a new song, one by which, by God's grace, we'll also get to sing there. And an angel flew overhead with the eternal gospel, the good news that transcends all times and places, the gospel proclaimed to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. The angel had a message. Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Fear God and worship him. This is the life of the Christian. This is the life of faith. This is the life lived through the liturgy of the church. God acts and faith responds. The words of, our, of the angel in our text we can only carry out in response, 
in faith toward God and in fervent love toward one another. You see, it's only by faith that we can do works that are truly good in the sight of God. And it is only by faith that we are able to worship God. What the Church has wrestled with ever since the Reformation is how this worship takes place. The Lutheran confessions to which we subscribe tell us clearly as we believe, teach, and confess. The divine service of the Gospel is to receive gifts from God, and the chief worship of the Gospel is to desire to receive the forgiveness of sins, grace, and righteousness, those gifts of God. Christ says of this worship, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life, and I will raise Him up on the last day. And the Father says, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him. So faith craves the gifts that Christ freely gives. And there's nothing that we can do to earn our salvation. So why do we insist on worshipping, and I probably should do finger quotes, worshipping God on our terms and not His? Well, it's because we don't always look at Jesus through the lens of the gospel, but of the law. We cannot serve God on our own. We cannot obey God on our own. We can't worship God on our own either. Faith craves God's gifts, but... Our sinful pride seeks to block the gifts for the sake of our own glory. And one of the most glaring errors the Lutheran confessors had to deal with was the notion that one is saved by the Mass being celebrated, uh, in Latin, the ex opera operato, that is, by the work being performed. In other words, Rome falsely taught that one is saved simply by the Mass being celebrated. In other words, merely going through the motions and calling it good enough. Do we live and act like that too, as if coming up for communion earns us points with God, or even watching this online service, even though you could be out doing something fun, you know, that this earns you some brownie points with God? As if we've done our part? Our Lutheran confessions challenge this. They ask, what else is this then to transfer Christ's glory to our works? It means that we would please God because of our works, not because of Christ. But this robs Christ of the glory of being the mediator between God and man. And Christ, as the mediator, works through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who brings you to faith in Christ. This same Spirit is the one who moves you to do good works. This Spirit of Christ also leads your faith to crave those gifts that Christ so freely gives. Gifts that Christ won for us on the cross and now gives to us in his sacraments. The gifts of forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and salvation are there to be received, and faith lays a hold of them. We are strengthened and nourished in our faith through the means of grace on account of Christ's atoning sacrifice for us, as he died to take away the sin of the world, including your sin and mine. Faith clings to the promises God attaches to the water and the bread and wine, Baptism works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. So, marked by the sign of the cross, we live in our baptism, trusting God's promises in the confession of our sins as we did earlier today. For confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins, and second, that we receive absolution, that is, forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself. Not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. And this, brothers and sisters, is one of the most amazing things in the entire universe, that we have these gifts and promises given to us by the Holy Spirit. And we have this faith in Christ and in his promises because by that Holy Spirit, he has given us his word. That same word that you heard read from the lectern, that same word proclaimed into your ears at this very moment over the internet, that same word that you've been taught through the years. Through this word, the Spirit builds and strengthens our saving faith in Christ. The blessed apostle St. Paul reminds us in Romans 10, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. 
fear God and worship him. Come and receive his gifts given for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now with the offertory on page 192. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Let us pray for the whole Church of God and for all people as they have need. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all people everywhere, we give you humble and sincere thanks for the innumerable blessings that you have bestowed on us without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving for us your saving word and the holy sacraments. Grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. In mercy, bring to repentance the enemies of your church and grant them amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ, and help us to fight the good fight of faith, that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow your grace on all nations of the earth. Bless especially our country, its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. We ask your special blessing upon our King, our Governor General, our Prime Minister and Parliament, our premier and provincial government, and our municipal governments as well. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound in all places. We commend to you the care of our schools, so that our children may grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue, and thus bring forth wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamity by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine, and from every other evil. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, and let all useful arts flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the lonely and the forsaken, the helper of the sick and needy, the comforter of the distressed and those who sorrow. Accept, we implore you, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before you as your humble service. As we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for our many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until we inherit eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Our hymn to depart today is one of my favorites, and I hope it's a hymn that you love as well. Number 744, Amazing Grace. Number 744. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of our service as we just sit and revel in the wonderful gifts that God has given us. And we give thanks back to God for his amazing mercy, his gifts through Christ. 
and uh, through the Holy Spirit. And we thank God for sending us people like those reformers who helped keep us true to the biblical faith that God has instilled in us. I uh, pray that all goes well for all of you this week, and that I'll see you again next week. Amen.